Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 16, we're going to roll the Sylvania 6L6. I recently got in some new old stock Sylvania 606 GCs. Small bottle and big bottle. And I thought it would be fun to compare these to my regular 6L6s. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Okay, back in tube lab number 11, we took a first look at the much used and loved 6L6 power tube. Today we're going to take a closer look at the Sylvania 6L6 WGB and the 6L6 GC small bottle and large bottle versions, as well as comparing them with my favorites. But be careful. The 6L6 WGB, or 5881 as it is also known, has a lower power rating to the later 6L6 GC. Let's take a quick look at the data sheets. So there's the tongue cell 5881 data sheet. Maximum plate voltage is 400. Maximum plate dissipation is 23 watts. Now those are maximums and often tube manufacturers, especially good ones, will give us recommendations as to how it would operate normally in a circuit. So normal high voltage would be 350 volts and 11.3 watts. Now let's compare that to the later version. Here's the RCA 606GC data sheet. Way at the bottom here it says AF, that's audio frequency, power amplifier class A. Maximum ratings, design maximum values. Plate voltage is 500 instead of 400 and plate dissipation is 30 watts maximum compared to 23. So that's always something to keep in mind when you're plugging in vintage tubes. Data sheets rock. Okay. Up first is my Sylvania 6L6 WGB or 5881. Let's take a quick look at it. It's got a large boxy plate tucked into a medium large bottle. It's got five good rivets on the wings. It's got a side getter. Okay, how did they sound? Bass was very nice plus. Really nice detail and tone as well as a bit forward. Mid-range was good, neutral, with just enough warmth. Treble was good plus, detailed with a bit of sparkle and a bit forward as well. My notes say snappy with excellent soundstage. Overall, a nice vintage tube. Next is the famous tongue saw. Oh, and I wanted to show you actually. Let's take go back a step. This is Mark Phillips. Phillips bought out Sylvania in the early 80s and they immediately started rebranding, they changed the colors and here is the same tube with a brown base which is not common in my experience with Sylvania and the old lettering as well. What's important with these tubes is not the label, it's whether or not the power output is reasonably closely matched. Okay, next we've got the Tungsol 5881. You can just see it on the glass. Often it's on the top as well, but people like their domes clean, so that would get rubbed off pretty darn quick. And you can see that these tubes also are labeled JAN, so Joint Army Navy, CTL 6L6 WGB. What a mouthful that is. So it's designated as both. And in my experience, the 5881 and the JAN tube as far as I can tell, they're identical. They sound identical. They look identical. 
And here is the Marconi rebranded version. Exactly the same tube, 5881, made in the U.S. Tungsol, as far as I know, only built in the U.S. And look at how sturdy these tubes are. They've got they've got a pair of micas or mouse ears times three, so six of those suckers anchoring that tube in. So this could take a lot of vibration. Okay, but how did they sound? Bass was good with nice tone and detail. Mid-range was good plus with a nice bit of detail. Treble was good plus. Clear, clean, and crisp with a wee bit of sparkle. Overall, a nice vintage tube. It's not hard to see why people love them. Unfortunately, all that love has made them expensive. Next is my Sylvania 606 GC small bottle. And now you can see why it's called a small bottle. Let's take a quick look at them. So you've got what I call a rounded rectangular plate. You see how it starts at the base for the rounding and then it goes into a rectangular structure. It's got a really interesting top getter. Let's see if you can see it. You can see there's a, a shield on the top of the heater. There's your opening at the top. Let's look at that getter. Can you see it in there? It is a solid round getter. It's pretty unusual in my experience. They're around, but you don't see them that often. Okay, how did those sound? Bass was good, with nice tone. Clean and clear. Mid-range was good, with nice pop. Treble was good, clean, clear, and crisp, with a bit of sparkle. Overall, a nice vintage tube. Next is my Sylvania 606 GC Tall Bottle. Let's take a quick look at them. It's also labeled STR387. That is the equivalent of a 606 GC. I'm not sure about these special labels that started appearing on later Sylvanias. Same basic plate structure as the smaller bottle. What's different, in fact, the plates, if you look at them, see the mica to mica? Let's see, I'll line them up for you. They're the same, the mica, the plates, that's all exactly the same. What's different? is that the bottle is higher at the top. And what that gives us is more space for heat dissipation, I believe. And they look cooler too. Okay, but how did they sound? Bass had very nice tone with good definition, not a common feature of any tube, big or small. Mid-range is very nice, clean and clear, with some warmth and punch. Treble carried on where the mid-range left off and was a bit forward with lots of sparkle. My notes say great detail and soundstage. Given how nice these tubes sounded, I'm going to award them best overall. Unfortunately, they're not cheap. Last is my daily listener in my Wii Custom Monoblocks. The reflector, 6P, 3S-E, or in Russian, 6N-3C-E. Let's see if we can I'll get that label up nice and close for you. These are from 1976. And they're in an equivalent to the 606 GC. And you can see they've got a really big boxy plate with a couple of large holes or slots for ventilation. Good wide wings for heat dissipation with lots of rivets. And, interesting enough, they've got dual saucer top getters. Cool, eh? And it's got the modern octal coin base, which I really like a lot. I think they look neat in, in my amps. And I've never had a problem with the coin base. And this is, this is the last development of the octal base. Okay. How did they sound? Bass had great tone with a bit of punch. Forward for sure. Mid-range was clean and clear with just enough richness. Treble was very nice. Clean, clear, and crisp. My notes say nice detail, good
good pop, a fun tube. I use these most days and like them a lot. I keep a good inventory at all times, and because it is so affordable, I'm going to award them a Best Buy. Now, none of these power tubes are less than good, and every tube is going to sound different in every amp. The only true way to discover what works best in your system is to roll some in and have a listen. Okay, let's have a quick look at what's on the workbench. Let's clear the decks carefully. You may have noticed that I've got little roll stoppers in place. Here's my favorite deburring tool. I can't believe I struggled for so long with crappy deburring tools and then I found this at a um, machine metal supply shop and this is a pro tool and boy does it ever work great. This one here is there's quite a few different brands, but this is a Noga. Okay. So, many of you may know that my hobby is designing and building tube amplifiers. The business is vintage tubes. But this is what I like to play with when I'm not selling tubes. So, if you watched an earlier video this year, you will know that I've I've built and I'm testing a phono preamp for the Russian 6N2P. It also will take a 12AX7 and a number of other tubes as well. And the secret to that is it uses a switch mode power supply for the for the heater filaments. So you just have to change your your power supply brick over to a different switch mode. 12 to 6 volts or 6 to 12 volts, whatever you're doing, and you've changed your 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 heater voltage. But what I did with the previous prototype was I tried a essentially what is a dual mono preamp design. And in this preamp, this is a line stage preamp, so it takes it'll take a phono preamp or a two volt uh, CD player or digital player input. And it uses a really neat R-Core transformer that's got two output windings that are identical. And as a result, essentially, we've got a dual power supply, dual filtering caps, dual chokes. And let me just flip it over for you. Let me see if I can grab a board. I've got one handy here. This is a power supply board. This is not the right one. In fact, that's on backwards. But, but this is basically what I use. So I'll have dual boards. And we'll essentially, we'll have dual mono. This, this preamp is going to run 6SN7s or 12SN7s. And um, we'll see how it works. I was extremely impressed with running dual mono on the phono stage, how much cleaner and clearer the sound stage got. I suspect that when you're running two channels side by side in a tube, and when you're running it all off the same B+, that you end up with some inter-channel distortion and cancellations that you don't know are there. That everything sounds great until you actually start separating the the left and right channels and make them completely independent and all of a sudden you realize what you've been missing. Anyways, this has been a fun project and hopefully we get that up and running soon. What came into the store recently? Believe it or not, we've got almost a thousand tubes en route right now. Wonderful vintage tubes and I can't wait to show them to you. So I recently bought a nice lot of Sylvania 6SN7 GTBs. Many of you know that this is one of my favorite preamp tube and driver tube. And the, the GTA is the earlier version of this tube. They're almost identical. Some people prefer them. Because they're rarer and harder to find, they're more expensive. The GTB, in my opinion, is, is virtually the same tube. It's a little more affordable. The big secret is getting the sections matched, of course, because it's a dual triode. Anyways, I made a deal on these, 
and we were dithering over the last few dollars and the seller said some a wholesaler I usually buy from quite a bit of stuff from said I'll throw in three 12 SN sevens to seal the deal and look what he sent me does everyone recognize that it's a 12 SN7 but it's a 12 SN7 bad boy there's your T plates waste chrome and if you could see down in there there's a nice foil getter 1940s or 50s there's no date code on this one but these are gorgeous tubes I've got a lot of 12 SN7s coming in and I'm hoping I'll get some more bad boys because of course you need at least a pair to do anything and look at this box Continental Electric Westinghouse another 12 SN7 isn't that beautiful it's just literally brand new 50 years old maybe and here's the neatest part it's branded Westinghouse oh that's another tube I wanted to show you Continental I'm not sure if that is a brand name for Westinghouse maybe somebody knows and can make a post Westinghouse of course built tubes in Canada as well as in the US Ah, this is the one I wanted to show you I've come across Dixie tubes before. This is a rebrand, of course. But look at this. Now, at first glance, it looks like an RCA, flat black plates. Another 12SN7. It's got a large D getter down there. But take a look at this. See that on the glass? Japan. And I love Japanese made tubes. They so many of them are just absolutely wonderful and one of the secrets to that is that many of the Japanese manufacturing plants were set up by Mullard Phillips and of course they knew their stuff so often you'll get a tube that looks heck you'll say that 12A7 looks an awful lot like a Mullard well and it flashes like a Mullard well guess who set up that plant there's a good hint, hint for everyone what else came in Oh yeah, some beautiful, well, I thought they were beautiful, Philips E80CCs, gold pins. This is the standard version, I believe. Somebody cleaned all the tubes, so they probably were pretty filthy when they were, when somebody found them or pulled them, because they're used tubes. Out of five tubes, only one of them tested nice and balanced. The rest of them, take a look at this. A pass is 65 on my tester. We're down in the 50s. They're close to being balanced, but that's nowhere near a pass. Oh, here's a really good one. 4180. 80 is fabulous. 41, not so fabulous. So, anyways, I can't. Whenever I have a problem, I always take a picture. I contact the seller. I normally never have a problem on eBay and the money was in my bank account that same day I think in this case the only time I've ever had problems buying tubes is on Facebook I've had terrible luck on Facebook in fact I don't buy tubes on Facebook anymore there's a tip for you okay if you stay till the end here's some new discount codes and stay safe everyone this is Jim from Valsenmore signing off cheers everyone